Welcome to the shooting show. This week we get all traditional. We're back in the Highlands stalking red stags and we update you with all the latest news from the shooting world. I've always liked shooting for the last like sort of five, six years. I used to love it when I was younger as well. And then I've done quite a bit of game shooting and ever since then I've always always uh, loved to have a go at deer stalking and then coming up here to have the opportunity to do it. It's really amazing. So I'm very excited about it. I'm just gonna stop you and have a quick shot on that target. Perfect. I'm gonna go and try and find a stag to uh, to shoot, um, to cull, and that's um, yeah, quite exciting. Never, never done this before. It's a new, new thing for me. So um, yeah, it's really exciting. Hopefully, we'll find one. It's going to be, uh, going to be good. The shooting show is back in Argyllshire with George Martin on his debut stag stalk under the direction of Glenative stalker Mark Shearn. Yeah, hopefully we'll survive the bridge crossing. It does look a bit dangerous. Let's go for it. Uh, so we're just taking a little break from the hiking. We've come a, a, lot, a long way up. Actually, it goes quite fast when you're sort of, you think oh, that's, that's miles away and you sort of end up coming up. It's really hard to concentrate on the amazing scenery uh, when, you're, when you're hiking because you're sort of trying to concentrate on not falling over on the, on the ground. And it's nice to stop and sort of take it all in and have a little break for a minute. And the water from the streams is lovely as well. It's nice to sort of take it all in, really. So we're just looking up in front to see if we can see anything before we uh, move on, because we don't want to bump into anything and spoil the day. Any kind of stag or? Uh, just uh, a shootable, you know, cull animal. Um, Mature, you know, seven, eight years and, and older. Um, preferably something with a, 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 a poor head, you know, a sort of switchy thing. You know, just with sort of spikes, you know, something that's dangerous to other stags. Yeah. We're going to march up the side of there, uh, up, up the ridge at the back, and then come down onto the deer over there. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Never, never shot a stag, and I really, something I've always wanted to do. And uh, it's going to be good if we actually get one. There's a good 50, 60 stags there. We're just going to drop down a little bit further and we're going to head straight along. If there's a stag there, there's a stag there, there's not, there's not. I'm pretty sure there are stags there. But the question is, are they going to stay there? Because there's these ones above us that are yeah. in full view, they might take off. We nearly, nearly shot a stag, and it, but they, they, uh, they got wind of us. Uh, and started moving away. We're going to go back out probably uh, later on in the week and see if we can find something. So we're here on day two now, going to uh, still try and find a stag. Um, we're just looking up on a pole to see if we can see anything. Uh, it'd be nice to try and get one today, but again, we've got lovely weather, even if it doesn't come off. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a nice time walking this amazing countryside here. Go for as long as we want. If they're not there, they're not going to appear, are they? <laughs> Maybe if we look long enough, they'll turn up. We saw so many yesterday, didn't we? Well, they should be out on the hill by now, but they're probably still in the woods, you know? See, there's a stag there, is It's third time lucky for George as everything quickly comes together during a late evening opportunity on day three. George, I didn't 
didn't think we were going to get him there for a second, but... teeth missing as well you know he probably would have struggled to survive the winter um because obviously they need to nip the grass oh. so yeah, it's a good one to take it's been a really big uh a big a big sort of drawn out process get, getting it um going up the first day on the hills and it being really long like a big long day and getting so close and it not happening and then going out yesterday in the morning uh, coming up on one really well and then it just got spooked at the last moment and then um, going out again in the after, sort of later in the afternoon uh, and we just never quite got that right and then uh, today we've come out here in the in the sort of later afternoon and we've got one and it was a good good one to shoot uh, an older one uh, and uh, it's perfect it's been really good Turkish there finally getting his red stag and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by Gunplan. The Lead Ammunition Group's final report has pushed for a total lead ban, correspondence reveals. The group's chairman, John Swift, has written to the Environment Secretary Liz Truss to describe lead as a highly toxic hazard. He said the report would back the eventual phase out of lead ammunition and phase in of the non-toxic ammunition alternatives. This concludes the flawed and controversial process that saw all the group's shooting representatives resign in disgust. Basque's Alan Jarrett said the letter was a further confirmation of the failures of the group. Basque has called for shotgun and firearms certificates to be extended to 10 years as part of a radical shake-up of the firearms licensing system. The organisation's latest white paper says a 10-year licence would reduce the burden on police forces, thereby improving the service shooters receive. Britain's top firearms cop, Andy Marsh, has given the proposal his qualified support. He said he would work to deliver 10-year certification without compromising on public safety. Weeks into the grouse shooting season, arrests are already spiking. Lancashire Police has issued a warning that protests against organised shoots must be peaceful after making four arrests. It comes as part of an ongoing investigation into the damage caused at two local sporting estates, as well as snares, traps and a trail camera being reported stolen. A police spokesman said the force was committed to tackling unlawful activity. If you run a shoot, don't miss iShoot magazine every month. Nominations are open now for the 11th Countryside Alliance Awards, also known as the Royal Oscars. Public nominations are open until the 2nd of November. Categories include local food and drink, village shop or post office, butcher and a new tourist enterprise category. If you want to make a nomination, head to the address on screen now. And finally, should the BBC sack Chris Packham? Shooters have been demanding his dismissal on social media after he attacked wildlife charities for what he called a shameful silence on fox hunting and hen harriers. The Countryside Alliance's Tim Bonner said Packham was using the position granted by a public service broadcaster to promote an extreme agenda. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. <laughs> <laughs>